Giving is brought to you by ExxonMobil. Welcome to Giving on Plum TV. I'm Lisa Shields. I'm joined today by Trevor Nielsen. And Trevor, when most people think of philanthropy, they think about donating money to a cause. But as you know, the real definition of philanthropy is making an effort right. to help humankind, any kind of effort. Right. And the three profiles we're going to look at today are about people who understand that making that effort starts with awareness and education. And the first piece is about one of my personal heroes, Nick Kristoff, who is a New York Times columnist and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you could pick up the New York Times now on any day that Nick is writing and know that the issue that he's analyzing that day is an issue that desperately needs the world's attention. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, he has a tremendous impact in the world of philanthropy. And no one understands better than Nick that it starts with awareness. W without awareness, you can't drive resources. Without awareness, you can't focus people's attention for the long term. And with these issues being as complicated as they are, that's what we need in order to address them. Mm -hmm. Well, let's hear from Nick Kristoff. Awareness means lives saved. There's just no question that if there's no awareness in this country, then people continue to die. And that's true of a geographic region, and it's true of a disease or a, uh, a problem. And uh, the, the first step towards bringing about change and saving lives is to shine a spotlight on a problem. Because until you build that awareness, then it's as if the problem doesn't exist. I see myself as the great holder of the flashlight. <laughs> and you know, I control some great real estate uh, at the New York Times. Because of that, I have this ability to help put things on the agenda. I don't think that I actually have any ability to persuade people about things they've already thought about. But that power of the flashlight to shine a light on something uh, and to make people think about it and face something, and you know, that is the first step toward bringing about change. I think one of the examples of creative philanthropy that has been most striking in the last few years has to do with education. There's been a lot of work about the, the power of education, the impact of education. And naturally, we think that the way you educate people is you build schools. And so the traditional approach was you go out and you, you put up a school somewhere. Turns out that's not hugely effective. It's fairly expensive to build a school. And while it is reasonably easy to determine that a school has been built with your money, it's very hard to ensure that the teachers actually show up. And a huge problem in so many countries is that you have a school and the students show up, the teachers don't. So there's been a lot of interesting work on alternative ways. For example, one of the most cost-effective ways of getting more people into school is to deworm kids. The basic pill that we use to deworm kids, albendazole, it just costs a few cents. And if you deworm the kids in an area, it dramatically reduces their absenteeism, partly because it reduces anemia, and it means that their nutrition actually goes to them and not their worms. It costs uh, more than $100 per extra student to go to school if you build, do spend that money building, building brick and mortar schools. If you do it by deworming kids, you can have an extra kid in school for about $4. And so it's, it's much more cost effective. There are a bunch of groups doing really interesting things. Some of them are going to fail, uh, but boy, there's a lot of innovation out there. One of the things that I think has really helped philanthropy recently has been the move of people from business into philanthropy. And they come at it with a real desire to see some metrics and uh, see some measurable improvement and see impact. I think that's been a really useful discipline because in general, people who've gone into humanitarian causes have been humanitarians who have just the most wonderful of hearts but not always a really strong business sensibility. And it takes both. Uh, and if you want to get bang for the buck, you've got to look at where you're going to really make a difference. You know, one of the people who is truly my hero is a woman in uh, Pakistan named Mukhtar Mai. I met her uh, years ago uh, after she had been gang raped on order of a tribal council. Uh, she, the, the sentence handed down had been that she should be gang raped. This is to punish her family because of something that her brother supposedly did. It was mind boggling. And then the assumption was that she was going to commit suicide and it would be over. And instead she somehow found in herself the courage to not kill herself and instead prosecute the attackers. 
and she did. Uh, she's just this utterly extraordinary woman. And then she took her compensation money and used it to start a school in her village because she said the reason uh, these kinds of things happen is because people aren't educated. She herself was uneducated, so she enrolled as a student in her own school. And then uh, she was harassed by all local officials. Uh, all the sort of feudal lords in the area uh, would like to kill her. Um, but she is just unbelievably tough. And she is taken from people who read my column, from other people, and uh, started uh, a series of other schools. She started a shelter for women who've been battered, who've been raped, who've been abused. Um, and a, a, a television show, a, a, a hot telephone hotline, uh, a library, a whole network of programs. And the result now is that uh, women in that area, when they are raped, they actually go to the police and they prosecute their attackers. All of a sudden, the incentives have changed. It used to be that you could rape a woman and nothing would happen to you because she would kill herself. Now, you may actually go to jail. That has completely changed the incentives, and as a result, there are a lot fewer rapes in that part of the South Punjab. And boy, I just think that people like that uh, uh, so much deserve our help. And she truly is changing uh, her part of Pakistan, and uh, that uh, philanthropy needs to figure out a lot more how to support people like that, and they exist absolutely all over the world. One of the failures in philanthropy has been that there hasn't been much hard-headed look at failures. Everybody always wants to talk about successes, partly because everybody always wants to be fundraising and get more money. You don't get that if you talk about failures. But we learn from failures more than we learn from successes. In our book, we tried to identify failures to learn from. I think one of them is that systematically we've exaggerated the degree to which you can get change from the top down. And in fact, that overwhelmingly, these top-down efforts where you convene a big UN conference and bring every, fly everybody in business class and talk about the problem have had remarkably little impact. And in contrast, there have been some grassroots, bottom-up efforts, local ownership, where the Westerners aren't the guys out in front with the megaphones. You know, those have had a really astounding success rate. And so what I would really encourage people to do is not just you know trundle out there with their idea and you know pronounce it from on high, but go out and listen and kick tires, support a, a local social entrepreneur or a local person who's actually in the lead, rather than kind of imposing what seems like a great idea um, when you're out in the Hamptons. Because of my work, people uh, will read books that I write. You know, I have this ability to help put things on the agenda. I don't think that I actually have any ability to persuade people about things they've already thought about, but that power over the flashlight to shine a light on something uh, and to make people think about it and face something, and you know, that is the first step toward bringing about change, and um, I'm just incredibly grateful that I do have this platform, and um, I felt with the column that on some issues I've actually made a difference, and I hope that the book will do the same.